Gentle Chords. Gentle Chords. Gentle Chords. Gentle Chords. Gentle Collaborations. Hello, I'm Victor Frost, audio engineer for My Little Pony, Love is Magic. In this session, I'm going to be giving you some basic guidelines in microphone and recording technique. Everyone thinks they already know how to use a microphone, more commonly called a mic. The reality is that, like any other tool, one must learn how to use a mic. Just like every individual's voices are different, everyone's uses of a mic should also slightly differ. Thankfully, there are some general principles and guidelines that apply to everyone. The physics of sound and electricity govern a mic's general principles of operation. A mic takes sound and translates it into an electrical signal. Loud sounds generate a large signal and soft sounds generate a small electrical signal. This translation process is always imperfect, and so many different types of mics have been invented to allow different mics to be chosen for different circumstances, balancing the trade-offs between how a particular mic translates sound and the sound being captured by the mic. A mic is only able to capture sound that exists, i.e. it records what it hears. If you sing out of tune, then an off-key sound is what the mic records. A thin, soft, wispy voice is still soft, thin, and wispy when heard by the mic. And a mic can't be used to overcome poor singing, speaking ability, or technique, no matter how much auto-tune tells us. Just as buying an expensive, high-quality piano can't improve your sight-reading ability, so will buying a high-quality mic not make your bad voice sound great. Just as a well-trained and practiced pianist will play better and sound better on a well-made instrument, the right mic, properly used, will capture the most desirable qualities of a voice, producing a much better result than would be achieved with the wrong mic. The basic idea is garbage in, garbage out. There are two basic principles about mics that you should know. That mics are directional and that sound travels in specific directions. Knowing this and keeping them in mind while recording should guide you in using your mic. When you sing or speak, sound emanates from your mouth perpendicular to your lips, face, and teeth. So you need to orient your face so that your voice is directed toward and into the pickup pattern of the mic. A mic picks up all sounds equally. That is, it doesn't capture your voice better than the person next to you just because you own it. As a result, your voice must be loud enough for it to stand out compared to the other sounds in the mic's vicinity. But if you listen to the Getting Prepared video, you should be in a nice quiet environment, right? In Disneyland attractions and attractions at other theme parks, ride designers use special microphones shaped like human heads to understand how things will sound like to the audiences. When you're doing your readings, you should pretend that you're performing to someone sitting where your microphone is. For a voiceover that is intimate, don't be afraid to move in closer. Getting closer to the microphone will enhance the lower and higher frequencies of your voice, which is perfect for whispery, breathy, romantic, or seductive reads. For reads that require a little extra loudness, like Fluttershy screaming, COME OUT! <laughs> you should give yourself a little extra room. After all, if someone screamed in your ear, you'd think it's too loud, right? The mic is the same way. One basic but very important element to good microphone technique is being able to work with plosives. Plosives, such as hard consonants such as T or P, can cause the diaphragm of the microphone to pop. At worst, this pop can potentially damage the microphone, and at best you'll have to do another take. Plosives can also happen at the ends of words, where the consonant requires a puff of air, such as when f Skewing your mouth or head away from the microphone, understanding the consonant and using a pop filter, and or using a windsock on your mic can help you minimize the effect of plosives. Be aware that when using a windsock, this is the, uh, the foam cover that goes over the head of your microphone, the sound of the microphone can be somewhat altered. Therefore, proper technique along with a pop filter is a much better solution. If you don't have a pop filter, some pantyhose stretched over a loop, like a wire coat hanger, will work just fine. Before you start making your audition reel, blow your nose, clean your ears, and gargle your throat with a glass of room temperature water. Following those simple steps will let your voice come out as it should, let you hear your voice as it sounds, and keep your throat nice and moist. When you finally begin recording, it's a good idea to watch the waveform as you record. Keep an eye out for when the waveform spikes and goes beyond the bounds of the graph. This is called clipping and it generally means you are too loud. 
try either lowering the input volume of your mic, tilting your head slightly away from the mic, or moving away from the mic slightly. Between each line, let the mic record just the ambient room noise for about 3 to 4 seconds, then take a deep breath and relax before you begin. Remember, this is supposed to be fun. I hope this session has helped you prepare for your audition for the game. All of us at Gentle Cold Collaborations look forward to hearing your submissions. Best of luck!